Good evening, class. My name is Larry. A famous author once said, he who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. That author was Hunter S. Thompson, probably the most influential man I have ever studied or came across. All of his writings that I've ever studied and read is just, it blows my mind how someone in that time period would be so ahead of the time. And the stuff he was writing about was just, it was unheard of at that point. <laughs> He lived a reckless life, but an organized life. And in his writing, I was able to find the spark of creativity that I had, I had been looking for. It was, you can be this out there and crazy beast of a human, but still have the ability to get people's attention and listen to you on a large scale. Hunter S. Thompson was able to gather a huge audience just off of being this strange individual and writing about strange things. He would write about football, but he couldn't take himself out of the game or out of the experience. So a story that was supposed to be just about football and covering a game turned into something more. It turned into this strange oddity of, of writing that he couldn't quite take himself out of. It was this drug use that he would do. It was, instead of writing about the game, he was writing about the strange tiles on the bathroom floor that he'd see while he was tripping on drugs. He ended up killing himself a few years back, and it was something that he was always talking about. And what I thought was so amazing about that is he wrote a suicide note, and the last words of the suicide note were, this won't hurt a bit. It was one sentence. He just said, I can't remember exactly what he said before, but the, the last line was, this won't hurt a bit. But the general idea of his suicide note was that he just lived too long, and he was getting too greedy. And even though he killed himself, and that's something that I just can't handle, is suicide, and I just, you could have just gotten through it, gotten some help, something. But he did it because he knew he had to. He, he had lived this amazing life back in the 60s and part of the 70s, and his writing just turned into something that people didn't really care much about. All his great works had already been written, and no one really gave much of a care about anything that he was doing now. He was still writing, but he knew that his time had come and gone. <laughs> so, the speech that I was supposed to give was about someone that I had lost someone that I loved or cared about. So I chose Hunter S. Thompson because anytime I, I, I think about him, what he might do, it just it's a, it's a spark of creativity. And I was told to write a paper about someone that I would like to meet one day, and it was Hunter S. Thompson. Just to be able to shake his hand and find out what his secret was, why he chose to live such a, a crazy lifestyle. <laughs> but that chance will never come. So, Hunter S. Thompson, if, if I could just meet anybody, it would be him. You know, great author and an amazing inspiration for anyone who thinks that there's some kind of a creative genius.